Hi fellow React Wizards, welcome back to our series where we take those scary sounding design patterns and make them as easy as putting socks on. Today we are talking about the factory design pattern. Trust me, it's not as complex as it sounds. In fact, it's like having your own custom car factory, but for React components. So what is this design pattern thing? It is a fancy way of saying I have different types of things or components, but I want a simple way to decide which one to create, depending on what the user asks for. We are transferring the responsibility of picking which thing to create from your React components to a special factory function. Re ready? Let's build a car factory, or I mean a component factory. So let's dive into the code. Okay, step one. First up, let's create the car blueprint. This is like the parent or base component that all our specific car types will inherit from. So let's go create this. So I'll create a folder, create components. And I'll create my components just beneath that folder. I will call it car.tsx. And what I will do here, I will just create a very basic component that accepts some props like car model, brand name, and the color as well. And this will be our blueprint. So all cars will have these basic features and we'll be displaying them to the UI as well. On step two, and this is the real fun where it begins. We want to decide which type of car to create for that we need a factory function that says, hmm, you want a Toyota or a Ford? I got you. So let's create this factory. I'll go inside our app folder. I'll create a new component or new file, which is called car factory. Car factory dot tsx. And this function, basically, it will take two props, the brand and the model as well, okay? And it will create the correct car for us. The switch case, it's super easy. It's just like flipping through your car catalog. And it says, oh, you said Ford? Here is your shiny Ford Fiesta. Easy as that. And what we are doing here, because we're using the switch method to make sure we are not case sensitive, Whatever brand I'm getting, I'm making sure I'm using this to lowercase uh, function in JavaScript. So whatever uh, property is passed, uppercase or lowercase or camel case or mixed up or whatever, it will transform it first to a lowercase, then compare it to our cases. So this way we avoid any bugs in the way. Step three, let's drive using the car factory. Now that we have a factory that makes cars, let's see how we can put it to a use. So we'll create a new component called car showroom. So I'll go right here, car showroom dot tsx. And this basically will just use that car factory to render the list of the cars for us. And you can see here, I'm just declaring a functional component and I'm creating a dummy data, which is an array of objects of cars, and they have the brand name and the model name as well. And then we have just a title, then we are mapping through our cars. And then, of course, you have to have a key here when you are mapping. Then we are triggering our car factory function that we created and we need to import it as well. So I'll go and import car factory did not export it so I have to go and export it first to make it available and let's try again so import car factory from car factory okay so we are mapping through our array and we are triggering that function we created which is our factory and if you remember it accept two parameters the brand and the model as well and that's what we are passing we are passing the car dot brand and car dot model and boom, you have got it a full on car showroom. We simply mapped over a list of car brands and models and our car factory spits out the right car component based on the input. Simple, right? 
And just like that, you have implemented the factory design pattern. It's so easy as ordering a car online, although maybe with a little less paperwork. So instead of manually deciding which car to create every time, our factory does all the heavy lifting for us. All you need is the right recipe, or in this case, the right input. So next time you got a bunch of components that are similar, but just slightly different, think of factory. And maybe a bonus, let's add some spices with custom colors. So what if you wanted to add custom colors to your cars? Let's go and update the factory function to handle that for us as well. So we'll go right there and we'll add, of course, a new prop which called color. And that will be of type string as well. And now what we can do here, instead of hard coding this, we can just pass on the color property. And same thing we have to do for others. I'll just copy this one and paste it here. Paste it there. And paste it there as well. So now our factory is much more dynamic. Okay. And all what we have to do is when we go to our car showroom, we can just, for example, have an extra property. For example, you have here, let's say you have color of red. And here, let's say you have color of purple. And here, let's say if you have color of golden. And here I have a spelling and of course our car facts are now expecting a third prop. So we'll pass that to so car dot color. And now you can make a whole rainbow of cars by yourself. All right, folks, that is the factory design pattern in React made simple and fun. I hope this helped break it down for you. Next time you are building a React app and need to design between different versions of a component, just remember, call the factory. And hey, if you like this, hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments what pattern you want to learn about next. Stay awesome, keep coding, I will catch you in the next one.